Guten Tag! For many Americans, the country of Austria is synonymous with Mount Utersberg and none other than the Hollywood creation of The Sound of Music. While the movie is one of our favorite things, it's definitely not one of Austria's. In general, Austrians have a love-hate relationship with this American movie. Sort of cheesy and historically inaccurate. But recently, the country has started to embrace it. After all, the city of Salzburg is a money-making tourist attraction. But Austria has so much more to offer. I'm referring to the Austrian Apfelstrudel. It reminds me of a cross between an American apple pie, Greek baklava, and an Italian calzone, all wrapped up in one. Apfelstrudel is centuries old, dating back to ancient Mesopotamia. It started out as thin dough layers served with honey and nuts. Then, on to Turkey and Greece, where the parent baklava was popularized. Eventually, the silk trade route likely introduced such confections to European countries, thus leading to Hungary. By the time it made its way to Vienna, Austria in the late 17th century, the sweet treat became known as strudel, which is German for whirlpool or swirl, a great description of what you see on the inside. I am really looking forward to sharing with you my Austrian apple strudel with an autumn twist recipe. It's a traditional strudel pie dough encrusting apples, rum soaked dried cranberries, orange, cinnamon, sugar, almonds, and buttered breadcrumbs. Don't forget the powdered sugar, cream, or vanilla sauce toppings. Now that's a dessert worthy of the season. Woo! I don't know about you, but all this food talk has given me a sweet tooth craving. Let's get to the recipe. For my Austrian apple strudel with an autumn twist recipe, you'll need. For the dough, you'll need all-purpose flour, salt, water, and a neutral oil. I'm using avocado, but vegetable oil would be fine. The filling includes dried cranberries, rum, or apple juice, orange juice, cranberry juice, or water for soaking the cranberries, four tart apples, orange juice from an orange, cinnamon, granulated sugar, slivered almonds, vanilla extract, butter, and breadcrumbs. For the topping, you'll need an egg, a little water, and powdered sugar. We're ready for our first step, which is to make the strudel dough. So you need a medium bowl, and in that, I am going to sift 200 grams of flour. Now, I actually measured this out for you, so if you don't wanna pull out your scale, then you can just use a one and a half cups plus four tablespoons. Just remember, don't pack your flour into the cups. Make sure that flour is loose or you end up putting in a lot more flour than you need. To that, we're gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, a third of a cup of warm water. Now I actually heated mine in the microwave for about 20 seconds until I got to 100, 110 degrees. Now this is not a yeast dough, so you don't have to worry about killing the yeast, but I do like the warm water in this recipe because we're gonna to have to manipulate this dough and we want this dough a relatively warm and we don't want it cold because then it won't be roll or stretch very well. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna add a fourth of a cup of oil to this and then just using a spoon, stir it all together, it's that easy. You wanna stir until all the liquid has been absorbed and actually I like to get in here with my hands because I wanna feel the texture of this dough. Now right now, this dough is a little dry. So I need to add about a teaspoon more of warm water until you have all the flour bits well combined into the dough. Once your dough has come together, we're gonna to turn it out onto a work surface and we're gonna need it for five minutes. Now, you could put flour on your work surface. If you find that your work surface is a, is a little sticky or the dough just doesn't move very well on it, add a little bit of flour. The reason we're doing this is we just need to develop that gluten and make this dough a nice, pliable, stretchy dough because we have to stretch it really, really thin once we roll it, when we roll it out. So we need to make sure we have that gluten developed to give us that stretch that we need. Notice I used oil in this recipe. I have also used butter. And traditionally in Austrian apple strudel recipes, they use either or. However, in my experience of using both, I can tell you the dough is much easier to manipulate and stretch thin if using the oil. The butter I have found might firm up if your air temperature is cooler than room temperature, thus making it more difficult to stretch. You could consider using butter in the summer months when your environment is warmer and using oil in the winter months when your environment is cooler. 
think about that one. Finishing up my five minutes of kneading here, and you can definitely tell about the four minute mark, you can really see this dough coming together. The gluten is starting to develop. It's a little bit more pliable and stretchy. It will be a lot easier to manipulate once we're ready to roll it out. Interesting thing about this dough is that traditionally, when people you make Austrian strudels, they will work this dough so much, it's like a total workout. They will slap it on the counter to help stretch that gluten. They'll beat it with a rolling pin. It's, it's like total exercise. Uh, but I find five minutes of kneading, just make sure you need the full five minutes without any breaks, does the trick. And now this, this dough is so nice and pliable right now. Take the dough and you're gonna place it back in the bowl where you mixed all the ingredients. And then we're gonna cover it. I'm just gonna cover mine with a towel and place it in a warm area. We wanna keep this dough at room temperature. Remember, room temperature dough will roll out a lot easier than if it's any cooler than that. I'm actually gonna put it over my stove, which is warm right now. I've got my oven set at 200 degrees to, make it, to create a warm environment. That way that dough will be just perfect temperature when we're ready to roll it out. In the meantime, go ahead and preheat your oven to 375 degrees. And then you also wanna prepare your cookie sheet, which is basically simple. All you need is, I would say, a 17 by 12 inch at least baking sheet and a sheet of parchment paper. I'm actually gonna use this sheet of parchment paper on which to roll the dough out and then place it on the cookie sheet when I'm ready. Just have your parchment paper and your cookie sheet ready to go. Our second step is to make the apple filling. So while the dough rests, you need a small bowl in which we're gonna add a half a cup of dried cranberries, and we're gonna add two tablespoons of rum. Now you can use any liquid that you want. Just think about the flavors that are already in this dish. So you could use any kind of an apple juice, orange juice, and you could always just resort to water as well. I think cranberry juice would be great in this. And it's, it's not a lot of liquid, so basically we're just softening up the dried cranberries, that's it. Stir the cranberries into the liquid just a bit. Traditionally, golden raisins are used, so you could totally use raisins instead of dried cranberries. But just allow the cranberries or the raisins to soak for 30 minutes. So just set them aside until we're ready for them. While the cranberries soak, go ahead, wash, peel, and then you're going to thinly slice four apples. I've already peeled and sliced three of my apples, so I'm on my fourth one, and these are medium-sized apples. Once you peel them, the easiest way I found to cut the apples is just to take your apple and then just cut one side off, leave a flat bottom down, cut that in half, then flip it on the larger flat side, and then cuts into small strips, and that will give you thinner, but yeah, a little bit of a chunky apple. And I found that to be the perfect size for an apple strudel. Little thin apple sticks. To our apples, we're gonna add one tablespoon of orange juice. I prefer fresh oranges, but you could totally use whatever orange juice you already have in your refrigerator. And then just pour the juice over the apples and then we're gonna stir it a little bit. Traditionally, lemon juice is used in this recipe. Whether you use orange or lemon, it doesn't matter because the acid is what is needed to prevent the apples from turning brown. And that's why I'm stirring the orange into the apples here is just to help coat the apples to prevent them from turning color. So then we're gonna add one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a half a cup of granulated sugar. We want all that nice sweetness, particularly since we're using tart apples, but we want the Granny Smith because that's what's going to hold up the shape. And then we're gonna add a quarter cup of slivered chopped almonds a teaspoon of vanilla. The last thing we add is gonna be our cranberries. So they've been soaking for 30 minutes, but we wanna drain them because we wanna get all that juice that's out of them. So I'm just going to strain them a little bit over the sink, and then we're just going to place them on top of the rest of the ingredients. Now let's give all these ingredients a good mix. So notice that our apples are all nicely coated with cinnamon and sugar and the rest of the ingredients. It looks like each apple has a little bit of cinnamon on it and that's just right. So we're gonna set it aside until we're ready for it. Our step three is to toast the breadcrumbs. In a small skillet, melt one tablespoon of butter. Then you're gonna add 30 grams of breadcrumbs. Now I just used regular bread and just pulverized it in my mini chopper. At 30 grams is a about a half a cup. It really depends on how heavy your bread is. You could probably use panko breadcrumbs if you wanted to. Regardless though, 30 grams is about what you need. And then we're just gonna stir this until the breadcrumbs brown 
And you could actually just put the breadcrumbs directly on the strudel and not toast them in butter. But I like this extra bit of crunch. I like the extra flavor of the toasting. So for me, this is my preferred method in the strudel. Breadcrumbs are toasted and ready to go. And I can tell because when I move the bread around the pan, I can hear the bread moving, which means it's got a little bit of a crust at the bottom. So now we're just going to set this aside. Our fourth step is to roll out the strudel dough. So you need a surface on which you can work because we're going to be rolling this dough out and it's going to be really, really thin. It's going to be bigger than an 18 by 12 inch space. So you need a large space. For me, my marble pastry board works. On it, I like to place a towel. It just helps keep my parchment paper from moving around. And then you need a sheet of parchment paper. This is the same paper that I cut to fit on my cookie sheet. But we're looking for a, a sheet that's at least a 17 by 12. Again, our dough is gonna roll out bigger than that because we're gonna end up stretching it by hand. But start with that at least. All right, so you've got everything ready to go. And we're gonna add a little bit of flour to the parchment paper just to help everything roll out without sticking to anything. But that's why I like to use parchment paper because Dough typically doesn't stick to parchment paper, so it just makes it a little easier. All right, and then we have our dough that we have been sitting over on in a warm area. Notice it hasn't risen, it's not supposed to. It has no yeast in it. The point was just to keep it at room temperature and make sure it was nice and warm and the gluten has time to sort of develop as it just sits. Go ahead and add a little bit of flour to your rolling pin. It's easiest to start in the center and start rolling out. It keeps your dough at a pretty equal thickness. Now, traditionally, Austrian home bakers will roll the dough directly on a very large floured kitchen towel or tablecloth until the dough stretches over the table, like hanging over the table. But most strudel recipes are enough to make two or three strudels. So my strudel recipe is only enough to make one. And so I can do the same sort of technique in a much smaller space. So if you want, you could double the recipe. You would just either need a larger space to roll the dough or just divide your dough into half or thirds and then roll them individually if you don't have a bigger space. You want to roll this out as thin as you can possibly get it using the rolling pin and right, which should be a minimum of an 18 by 12 and mine's about 18 by 14, 15 right now. So it's definitely bigger than that, but we want it bigger if we can. It needs to be paper, paper thin. Once you rolled it out about as much as you think you can, this is a resilient dough. You can just lift it up off the paper and then you're going to take your fists like this under the dough. And then you're just going to, in the center, and then you're going to start moving your fists out to where you're stretching it and sliding your fists along the dough as you do that. This is how we get that paper thin dough. It creates the layers once it's wrapped around the apple filling. Traditionally in Austria, old Austrian apple strudel recipes will say that you should roll this out and stretch it thin enough to where you can read a love letter through the dough. It's okay if you stretch it so much that you get tears in it because you're gonna be just rolling it in layers anyway. So the tear should over the roll. Any areas where you see thickness, try to stretch the dough out. Think of a pizza crust as you're stretching this. Once you have your dough stretched out as much as you're gonna get it, then you're going to brush two tablespoons of melted butter over the top, all over it. Okay, our step five is to add the filling and fold. So we're almost done. All right, we're gonna start on one short side of our dough. And I'm gonna do a measure six inches from the edge of the dough, which puts me right here. That's where I'm gonna place my breadcrumbs, okay? And I need to do a six inch wide strip of breadcrumbs. So that's gonna put me about right here. Okay, and then that's where we're going to place our breadcrumbs, leaving a two inch border at the top on and at the bottom. Okay, so I have an idea about where that is. All right, and then you're just going to sprinkle your breadcrumbs all over that space. We need that two inch border at the top and the bottom because that's where we're going to fold over and we don't need any filling there. So the breadcrumbs are needed to soak up any extra liquid that might be remaining from the apple mixture. So you don't have to toast them if you don't want to. If you don't have time, don't bother. Just put the breadcrumbs on here and then you try to spread them out because this is exactly the same area that we're putting our filling. Okay, now it's time to add our apple filling. So I'll typically like to do a little stir just to mix everything up. And then in a separate bowl or over the sink, you're going to strain the mixture. So I'm just going to use a strainer in a bowl so that you can see it easily. 
because we have a quite a bit of liquid in here from the juice. We're just going to place the apple filling over the breadcrumb area. Try to disperse your cranberries throughout because when you roll it up, you don't want a huge concentrated chunk of cranberries since there are a lot more apples than there are cranberries. Okay, you can leave a few apples left if you think that that's too many. I think I'm going to. I've got a few pieces left, so I think that's good enough. It'll make a great little snack. Okay, we want to fold both the top and the bottom over because we want to ensure that we have coverage on both sides because we don't want our apple filling to ooze out. And so when you fold it over, fold from one end to the other, it also makes a prettier rectangle roll. Notice how we can see the cranberries, but also you can see the bulging out of the apples because our dough is really thin. So you want, that's why we want that thin dough. All right, so now we're gonna take one side, this is why it's six inches long, because we need to cover it over our apple filling, All right? Again, it stretches very nicely. Think of this like a soft taco when you roll this up, like a jelly roll or cinnamon roll. So I'm just gonna use my parchment paper to help me roll this dough over, keeping the ends tight as we roll so nothing oozes or seeps out. So let's move our strudel here to the middle of this paper because it's the same paper that we are going to place on our cookie sheet. Just carefully lift up your paper and voila, it's on the cookie sheet. Okay, our last bit here is to brush a little egg wash over the top. So in a small bowl, just crack an egg. To that, we're gonna add one tablespoon of water and then just do a quick little beat. And we're just gonna brush it on. This egg wash will give the dough a nice brown golden color. You don't have to do the egg wash, you could do butter. And you're not gonna use all of it either. Our sixth step is to bake and serve. So we're gonna bake the strudel in the preheated oven for 40 to 50 minutes or until golden brown. Just place your strudel on the center rack and set your timer for, set, look at it 40 minutes. If it's nice and golden brown, take it out. If it's not, let it go 15 minutes. You might even want to let it go for an hour. Strudel came out of the oven. Let's take a look. I'm so excited. Look how pretty it is. It's nice and golden brown from the egg wash on top. It's crusty, I can hear it. All right, so we're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes and then we're gonna do the last little powdered sugar topping to it and cut into it. Now it's time to transfer our strudel here. You could use a spatula if you want, but because the dough is nice and crusty, it comes right off. Look at that, it's nice and golden brown all around, including the ends. And then just place it on a pretty serving plate or plate of your choice. I just switched serving plates because my white one was too small. It was square instead of rectangular, which is what we have here. Okay, again, taking a look at that beautiful strudel. Now if you'll notice here, that little spot there, I've got a little bit of apple goo coming out of that. I had a little hole in there. Notice that your dough is still gonna cook well, and even if you have a little tear or a hole here and there, your filling is still gonna stay inside. Okay, so for presentation, I like to sprinkle on a little bit of powdered sugar. So start in the bowl first, just to make sure you get a nice little bit going there. And then just dust on your sugar as much as you want. Just let it snow. A little too early for winter, but it sure makes it pretty. And there you are. Moment of truth. Let's cut into this and see what we have. Oh yeah, got a nice filling in there. You can see all the apples and the cranberries. You can see a little of the breadcrumbs at the bottom that soaked up any extra liquid. You can see the flaky pastry there. It's a pretty strudel. Beautiful strudel you could serve to any of your guests. Let's give it a taste. Willkommen. Hello. <laughs> welcome. It's German for welcome. <laughs> Today's bake is all about Austrian apple strudel with an autumn twist. You ready to taste the fall? Yeah. Go ahead and take a bite. Many people think of an apple strudel as German, but actually it is Austrian. It's similar to the Greek baklava based on the dough, the sweetness, and the nuts that are on the inside. What are your thoughts? Very similar to an apple pie. The filling, how is it different from traditional apple pie filling? So the autumn twist is that I added dried cranberries 
Typically in an ap apple strudel, there are golden raisins. There is uh, breadcrumbs at the bottom to help soak in the apple liquid, which we don't put in a traditional American apple pie. I added a little bit of orange flavoring instead of lemon to keep the apples from turning brown. But it is very similar to an apple pie. As you can see, there are connections all over the world between the, the baklava from Greece, the um, turkey even has its own sort of baklava with, with pine nuts in it, and then of course, all the way to America, which is apple pie. I kind of think of it as a combination of a baklava, an American apple pie, and an Italian calzone, because it's wrapped in a dough. Yeah, it definitely looks like a calzone there. <laughs> so what do you think? Is this, does it taste like an apple pie? Sweeter, about the same? Well, I guess it depends on who's making the apple pie. That's true. Well, what about the crust? Um, crust is light, flaky. That's, I think, the biggest difference between an apple pie is, is it's not quite as, well, at least the crust that we like, are much thicker, um, whereas this is a much lighter uh, crust. Yes, in fact, um, people who don't want to actually make the dough for the strudel, you can buy phyllo dough, just brush it with butter, and then layer it, then put your apple filling on it, and roll it up, and you can have the same sort of texture. So it definitely is meant to be thinner. Yeah, just yeah. need some um, some vanilla ice cream is what we need. <laughs> yes, I'm glad you said that because apple strudel <laughs> is best served warm with a scoop of vanilla ice cream or cold or at room temperature with vanilla sauce and a dollop of whipped cream. Can't say no to that. I yeah. feel like I've missed part of the dessert. Oh, shh, shh, shh. You can always add that. And why not a little bit of dusting of cinnamon for good measure on the top of it if you wanted to. Well, thanks for watching. I always appreciate your support. Until next time, Baba Gedivelt Bayan, go back the world.